So there is the possibility of even offering a fully online program um, through our open university. Now, this open university will be one facet of, of Ateneo de Davao, no? but embedded in the courseware that we are developing is also that part where if we will be shifting again to um, if when things normalize, uh, we will take advantage of that component of our courseware in order to deliver content face-to-face. -face. So in other words, we won't really discard the courseware that we will be developing um, in the next couple of months, maybe. You know? um, but we will be taking advantage of it so that uh, the way that instruction will unfold later on will be capitalizing on the technology that has been made available to us, but at the same time, it will be greatly um, complemented by the actual face-to-face -face interaction that we would have with our students, hopefully in the, in the future. Now, Father Joel also outlined some of the major challenges because of this shift online. One of that is the development of online courses. The second is the development of this courseware. Next is our facility and expertise in terms of using online instructional technology. And at the same time, uh, a development in, in, in how we design our instruction to make it suitable for online learning. Now, these are things, major areas that define the challenges that um, confront us, especially as we shift online. So having said that, no, um, siguro there, at this point in, 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 in the school year, parang we would see that there's really a pressing need to develop courseware. While um, I was very happy to listen to uh, the uh, coordinators and the uh, administrators report about your experiences of teaching online. Some of it were very encouraging and I'm quite happy to hear that you know we're making the most out of the uh, situation that we are in right now. You know? um, not everyone uh, is shares for example the some of the high points that we've been um, sharing. You know? Uh, there are, for example, um, among our students, there's a great range in terms of students' experiences. Yung iba, parang, ano, parang uh, on the one extreme, you'd have professors who just give them content without even any explanation, without any video, just reading materials. And parang the last I heard, parang that, that those professors have not met with their students yet. No? That's one extreme. The other extreme are professors who are very strict uh, and rigid in terms of requiring, requiring students to really attend every time there's a synchronous session. You know? uh, not considering or not even given consideration to students who are actually studying overseas and have to contend with the time zone differences and also students who are living in places with uh, very minimal to Mill uh, connectivity. Uh, another thing that uh, sort of uh, has come up, no? um, some of our students uh, are, are losing motivation to attend online classes. No? Um, and much of that um, is, is, not, is not entirely our fault, no? nor is it entirely their fault. But perhaps this could be addressed by designing our courses carefully so that our students could be motivated um, to, to attend their classes or maybe to do their classwork uh, despite the circumstances. There's also uh, the common complaint about how online learning is so tiring and so difficult not only for students but also for teachers. No? It's really a very different experience when you're delivering a lecture and it's as if you're just doing a monologue uh, on screen. No? Um, and you know, not knowing but what your uh, audience audience's reaction would be, not knowing, for example, uh, whether your uh, you know, parang the, the usual 
tricks of the trade that you apply whenever you're lecturing are really working because you know uh, you, you can't see them nor can you really know um, you know the, the, the reactions that they're having behind the screen so there's that growing frustration in terms of teaching online especially for those who have been accustomed to the practice of just delivering their content by lecturing um, also in 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 the bigger context uh, what makes this even more difficult is the worsening connectivity issue with more schools parang going online i'm sure you might have noticed a dip in terms of uh internet speed which makes certain modes of delivery quite um frustrating you know halimbawa if we're conducting lectures uh, there, ako personally, parang uh, certain times of the day, parang sobrang bagal talaga and my voice comes out really choppy. Or if not, parang students would get disconnected or I would get disconnected in the middle of a lecture. Uh, so, given all these situations, and I'm sure there's a lot more that you could share in terms of uh, how you're faring in your own, own online classes, uh, I think one of the things to be able to address that is that we need to really design our courses in such a way that we could buffer the effects of um, the things that, that we have mentioned. No? Um, that if we are able to design our course as well, then maybe we could develop more asynchronous classes instead of relying entirely on synchronous classes and so on and so forth. So, Given that need, uh, I, I think our priority at this point is to develop courseware. Let me just define what courseware means. Uh, courseware is really the software that contains the content, uh, the way it is being taught, and of course the strategies that are being employed in order to teach that content. And all of that, uh, as, as you can see in the definition, is in that software. So currently, the main software that we're using in order to do all these things that we're doing in an educational setting is through our uh, LMS. No? Um, so when you take all these things together, the technology uh, that's made available for us to teach online and at the same time, the courses that we design and the content that we prepared uh, to be that we prep, that we have prepared and that we have uploaded through the software, all of that becomes courseware. But courseware, the key to building good courseware, is not really in terms of the technology, but in terms of instructional design. Uh, here we have a very simple definition and often cited definition in the literature uh, from Roderick. No? It says that instructional design is, well, the arts and sci art and science of creating an environment where you bring a learner from a state of not being able to do something to a state of him being able to accomplish something. Uh, so in, in a sense, but an instructional design is not really um, uh, a foreign concept to all of us. Uh, when we are strategizing in terms of how we could teach a particular content online. Uh, in effect, we're also employing the methods of instruction. No? We're trying to design our courses in such a way that it would be more uh, motivating for students to learn. But the thing about instructional design is that in the context in, in which it was first used, that is in the context of developing software for training people, Instructional design is really providing people not only with a scaffolding in order to help them learn, okay, uh, without with minimal um, teacher-led um, um, instruction, but for learners to go through an experience where the environment facilitates and even motivates them to learn more. So that's a rather tall order when we think of how instructional design is really at the core of how we can put up our courseware online. 
Um, and, and much of that needs a lot of reflecting on the things that we have been doing. And at the same time, a lot of imagining and a lot of tapping into existing resources in order to be able to match the audience that we are trying to teach. That's why instructional design, in a sense, is an even greater and even more pressing concern um, than learning than learning management system or the LMS. Um, in the other three schools uh, where I have had conversations, one of the concern that was often raised is, um, could we decide on what LMS we will use? No? Um, so my response to that is that the decision in terms of what LMS to use should be shaped by the design of the course itself. No? And that is why we will see, because of the design of the course, that certain learning management systems will not be able to support the kind of design that we would want our courses to have. So you will find that certain LMS are too basic, are too rudimentary, you know, while some LMS are sophisticated enough to be able to accommodate the needs of teaching the courses that we want to teach. So yung LMS really, as, you, uh, as we have noted here, is the web-based software platform that provides an interactive online learning environment. So that's why an LMS would contain features where uh, a, you, a feature which allows you to communicate with your students, which allows you to basically uh, post activities, to create assessments, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, the school setup, if you could take, think of the more brick and mortar school as the environment in which students can learn, the LMS, in a sense, is that virtual environment that students enter into so that they could learn. So <coughs> having said that, um, uh, I, I'm now presenting Yung, yung the, the, the scheme. Okay. I'm now presenting the scheme um, that we could use in terms of developing courseware. So this is a general scheme that will just iterate itself. No? Uh, for example, after going through one sequence of this, then hopefully we could pro produce version 1.0 of the software that could be made available for uh, the open university and at the same time that could be made available for our students and then once that is done we could go through another iteration of it to develop version 2.0 and so on and so forth so it's really just a process of um, determining steps that we could take so that we will have a systematic way of developing courseware not only for this time but also for the succeeding, uh, uh, succeeding times. No? So <clears throat> it start off, well, it will start off by identifying Muna the subject that we would like to convert no? or uh, that, that we would like to focus on, that we would like to subject through a more um, structured courseware development. And at the same time, it would entail at least the first step is also identifying the faculty who are teaching that particular subject. Now, later, I will show you why that is important because um, the people that we identify will form part of a team that will help basically drive the development of this courseware. So that's why once these people and the subjects have been identified, then itong second step is really the, uh, this is dito yung the nitty gritty of everything. This is where it happens. No? Because part of this uh, courseware development step is where you prepare the content. And then once the content and the design has already been prepared, then it is now converted into an actual online course. And when it has been converted into an actual online course, then you teach the end users in terms of how to use it. Um, so yun po yung second step na to. 
Uh, the third step is really us just assuring that the courses that we produce will undergo some kind of quality assurance. No? Uh, so before a courseware is rolled out for public consumption, then part of that means testing whether the videos are working well, the links are working well, is there any parang, uh, proofreading uh, mistake in terms of how instructions are being uh, being written. No? So yun, mga, a lot of proofreading also happens in this particular stage. No? And once that has passed kumbaga, the test, then the course is ready to be deployed online. No? So the courseware, the deployment of this courseware will go through the semester where the course will be used not only by the teacher but also by the students. Um, this is not really a sequential step but it's rather a step that happens while we're teaching the courses that were that we have developed no um, that we'll be providing more um, thematic um, learning activities for the teachers so that we could increase our own understanding of online education uh, there's a lot of literature there and a lot of mga prescriptions a lot of studies that are being made on online education and i guess for many of us parang it, it would be good to become more aware of these practices so that it could feed in into the way that we develop and um, customize our courses later on so the end product of this is that once we have that standard courseware and when people are already proficient in terms of you know parang handling the courseware that they're that that is assigned to them or that or the courseware that they're teaching, then you know, people will become more confident in terms of customizing the courseware. Now, the best practices that you would find in terms of your own customization of your courseware could feed into, again, the development of the standard courseware template no? uh, that we will make available for the Open University. So that, parang just like any software, if somebody comes in and wants to teach this course, meron na siya kaagad na parang finished product niya no and you know once he, once this person becomes familiar with it again then he could customize the course according to his own siguro specific style of teaching no While, which still takes into consideration uh, the crucial elements that make up an Ateneo de Davao online courseware okay so uh, this um, this uh, chart flow chart no? uh, is basically the the steps that I've mentioned earlier no uh, kaya sabi ko parang it's a scheme because if you if you want to take a look at it in terms of parang ano bang ano map natin ito so that we could uh, really work on converting all our subjects into courseware no so this this in a sense is a map no so as you can see doon sa first year no um, yung focus would be the GE subjects. No? Um, I, I think it might not be applicable to us here in the School of Nursing because we're well, time GE subjects. But the whole idea is that the first courseware or the first subjects that we convert into courseware would be subjects that would be catering to the biggest number of students. No? So it could be parang a courseware where that is taught to a certain cohort and which is being taught, uh, taught by uh, a number of faculty. You know? So we address that first because that's the easiest thing to work on. No? Kasi you'd have more people working on the same thing uh, at the same time. Now, if you go down the line, uh, eventually um, the last phases of that initial courseware development would be the professional subjects which cater only to a single section it, which is being taught only by a single faculty. Now, mahirap po kasi yung ano, paggawa ng courseware kasi if we really um, benchmark it against a certain standard, which I will show later, uh, what we are actually doing when we are creating courseware is like authoring a book. No? Uh, and that's why the courseware that you develop with your peers parang could be like a shared authorship no, in terms of the courseware. So that parang if you look at, you know, alimbawa courses in Coursera or 
yung mga the other um, online courses that being that are being offered commercially you could see there na parang part of what makes a course uh, very viable is because it was it was made by a group of experts no? who have actually created the course no so parang ganun yung idea natin in terms of how we could collaborate in terms of building courseware no so hindi lang mahirap po siya pag mag-isa lang talaga no uh, and that's why um yung siguro parang to obtain a greater familiarity in terms of how to do it let's start first with those courses that have many teachers um, teaching it kasi we could, by then parang we could share resources in terms of you know parang assessment or even the crafting of certain of outcomes etc etc no? um, then it makes for a richer course sa philo department for example part of what they're doing you know, as a response to this courseware development process is that they're preparing to record lectures being given by different philo faculty because they're teaching a, sub, a core subject and it's being taught basically by the entire faculty so what they're planning to do is to divide in uh, topics you know, and they will record it so that the lecture could be done asynchronously and it's being done, for example, by a professor na, who has greater siguro, expertise in that particular topic. So in a sense, parang it's a win-win for teachers and students. For the teacher, parang at least parang you don't have to worry about the lecture part. You could focus on uh, siguro more in-depth interaction with students, more in-depth feedback giving and supervision. No? Uh, for the students, they have the the benefit of listening to the wisdom of the many professors who are actually teaching the same subject. No? So in a way, parang it's a win-win situation as well. So parang this is just one concrete expression of the collaboration that uh, is needed in order to carry out uh, this courseware development process. So as you can see here, no? if for example, um, all the core subjects have been converted all the professional subjects that are catering to a num to a big number of students are have been converted and then all the other professional subjects have been converted as well no? by the time we finish with with all these phases no uh, then perhaps we could already say na parang we could that we could truly offer a fully online program no um, so that expands uh, the reach of our university. No? Uh, it could be courses that could be viable, especially for those who are not in the Philippines or uh, in line with our own vision and mission, we could offer these courses even for those um, who cannot come to Davao in order to study, but at least they could learn that in the places where they are right now. No? Uh, kaya part of what we're doing in terms of courseware development is being supplemented by our advocacy for internet connectivity. Kaya si Father Joel along with um, uh, sila Dr. Sese, sila Raul Lumapas, no? um, they're working with uh, the ICT, they're working with students in order to highlight really this advocacy. No? Uh, because yun nga, parang this courseware will really be supported by that infrastructure. No? Parang it will be, uh, they, will they will really complement each other. Huh? Okay. So um, if this is the scheme in terms of how we will be developing um, kumbaga, the bigger map in terms of how courseware development will proceed, let's take a look now at more specific process in terms of how we could actually do it. Uh, our approach to developing courseware is based on um, uh, literature which um, highlights the advantages of a team-based online course production. So, kaya sabi ko parang uh, it's going to be a collaborative effort because part of producing online courseware as a team means that we will be defining roles in terms of teams that will be working on their courseware. You know? 
So parang this is moving away from the uh, idea na yung parang lone ranger ka in developing your courses. Now some of us would be able to do it quickly, no? but if it is going to be a really solidly built course, then it will really need a collaboration with other people so that it really becomes uh, a, real, a real quality course. No? However, in the literature, parang there are potential issues that could arise. No? One of that is because you know, parang every time there's a meeting where we have to discuss about something, uh, faculty would often feel the ano, parang uh, dagdag workload na naman to kasi trabaho na naman, no? extra meetings and so on and so forth. No? So, so it's not something that we only experience, but it's something that has been noted in the literature as well. No? And again, an even more difficult process that uh, issue that arises during the process is when people who have conflicting opinions on what to put in in the courseware. No? Uh, when that happens, parang uh, it creates, of course, certain tensions. Um, but despite these issues, um, one advantage of that is it allows us to learn from each other. No? So when senior faculty parang are able to con are able to work with junior faculty who, who might be more proficient in terms of strategies that could address parang the needs of uh, the younger generation that we're teaching. Parang that's an advantage. No? At the same time, parang the junior faculty could learn from the wealth of experience and expertise of the senior faculty. No? Um, so in a sense, parang we're, especially in this time of crisis, parang we're pitching in, no? we're helping each other out so that we could really craft something that would be, that we would all be proud of because you know, parang it's, it's us putting our heads together to to author this particular courseware. So in terms of roles, um, I, I'm just presenting this for now. No? Um, there are basically four major roles in this courseware development process. No? Um, yung fifth one is, uh, I, I will just uh, mention as an addendum. No? So um, first important role is the course developer. So the course developer is, in a, in, in a subject which is being taught by a lot of teachers, um, the, it could be the lead faculty member or someone who could be a senior uh, subject matter expert. No? Uh, so he could be, he, he, this person, she will be the one to basically um, ensure the quality of the course that is being designed. No? Um, so yon parang part of that is siguro facilitating all the other inputs that are coming in, but at least the course developer um, parang generates a consensus in terms of her team members. Uh, in 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 in, in um, uh, generates a consensus in terms of the content and the quality and the design of the course that they're making. Uh, the other team members are the the course development team members no so they are basically also subject matter experts no they could be co-faculty who are teaching the same course or maybe they may not exactly teach the same course but certainly parang they have something to contribute to the subject that you're developing so uh, you can have as many people participating here so the more complex the project Siguro the more minds you will need in order to author a particular course. So what they do is basically to help in the right rewriting or writing of learning outcomes, help in the aligning of, of assessments with the learning outcomes, help in the writing out of the actual assessments, help in terms of providing answers or a rubric in terms of what needs to be done, no? uh, help in terms of supplying content that will be used for the course. No? Um, they could also contribute, uh, similar to my example kanina of the philo faculty, they can contribute recorded videos no? so that um, yun, um, they could be, um, you know, uh, they, they could be teaching the course uh, along with the person who is actually teaching the course. So these are the two first uh, no, um, team roles. 
The other two are the instructional designer and the course technician. So we're really defining the role of the instructional designer here as the one who is responsible for just looking into how content could be suited for online delivery. So parang yun yung eye na, eyes na pinoprovide ng instructional designer. No? So he basic, she basically would be looking at the pedagogy. You know? She'll be looking in terms of how uh, certain um, instructional technologies could, would be appropriate for this particular content and so on and so forth. Now, uh, each school um, has designated an instructional designer. Yung na-designate in a school will form part of a team within the university, which we will still be convening soon. So they will be, kumbaga, yung the quality assurance team of the courseware that will be developed. But within the school, they could be the head instructional designer. Um, what, what we've done, at least in some of the other schools, in the SBG, parang they're considering also of having instructional designers or at least assigning the role of an instructional designer within the department itself. No? So that parang meron kang someone who not only has um, a certain familiarity with um, instructional design, but also parang a, a grounding in terms of the discipline. Kasi nga, di ba, um, certain disciplines have really ways of delivering content. No? So an instructional designer that who is not grounded in that discipline might end up with a bifurcated idea of how content will be delivered. So yun, uh, the instructional designer basically is responsible for ensuring that the quality of the courses that are being developed will meet the standards. No? Uh, so the standards that we're adopting, uh, I've taken it from the NSQ standards, no? National Standards for Quality Online Courses. This is the same um, standards that they're using in the U.S. to evaluate online courses. No? Uh, so we're appropriating that for our purposes para at least meron tayong goal in term, and benchmark in terms of how we could develop our courses. So doon sa... Standards na yan may nakalagay halimbawa in terms of um, the use of kunyan, how a course is designed in terms of overview and orientation, uh, in terms of learner support, in terms of instructional technology. So may mga iba-ibang categories po siya doon. No? So the instructional designer basically looks into that no, and, and tries to align again uh, the courses so that it will meet uh, at least meet the minimum expectations of that standard. Um, the fourth role is that of the course technician. Uh, we, the course technician um, is really the one who attends to the actual, um, um, the actual conversion of the course from the design into the uh, course that is in the LMS. No? So, but what we've done here is that um, one of the things that we have proposed was that if there is enough faculty, halimbawa, in a particular department or in a particular school, parang somebody who could be course technician could be, uh, for example, the loaded for the entire semester. So that ito na yung focus niya, parang really working with, you know, parang the LMS itself and making sure that it's all up there, no? But one of the problems that was raised was that, you know, parang we don't have enough teaching faculty na nga. That's why parang now we've tapped the administrative associates, especially those who are, uh, in effect, uh, skilled already with technology, you know, uh, to be the course technicians. So ang ano po dito is that yung, yung concern ng faculty is just making sure that You've designed the course, you have all the content ready, but in terms of building its LMS, hindi nyo na problemahin because the course technicians will do that. Uh, but that doesn't mean that your role parang, uh, is not important because in fact, parang anong ilalagay ng course technician doon 
if you have not built it really solidly parang in terms of the course design blueprint. No? So yun, um, the course technician will be the one providing technical support eventually kasi since sila naman ang group, sila naman ang naggawa nun sa LMS talaga, then any problem that may arise in terms of teachers um, using the, the courseware that they're teaching uh, could already be addressed by the, this in-house course technician. So yun, parang uh, we'll be providing training for the course technician as well. No? So ang focus nan is really all the very technical configurations no? of the LMS that you'll be using. Okay. So the fifth role here, which is not stated here, is the project manager. No? At least, uh, uh, sorry kung kinukuan ko lang example ko yung SAS because right now parang we have already gone through several sessions. No? Uh, yung assistant dean functioned as the uh, project manager. So what the project manager does is basically to ensure that um, yung mga timelines are being met, schedules or deadlines are being met, basically in oversee lang, parang the project manager would know which courses are being developed. So she would be coordinating with the course developer and basically asking, kumusta na, anong kailangan dito, etc., etc. Okay. So this, yung roles na to fall into uh, the course development workflow. So this is really the process in terms of how uh, the courseware development process will go. No? So the first major step is really the content preparation. The second is the actual online course creation. And the third is the training in terms of the use of the LMS. Now, pagdating dito sa LMS training po, um, hindi na tuturuan ng all the nitty gritties. No? Pero ang tuturo lang, parang it's like instead of teaching people to build a television set, uh, you'll only be taught how to operate the television set. So parang less hassle no? uh, in terms of how to use those things. Pero yun, parang as you become more familiar with it, then it will give you greater confidence in terms of you know, customizing it further. Um, each of these steps will have parang three sub-steps. No? So... What is required in order to start the process and a description of the process itself and then the expected output from that particular step. No? Putting it all together, parang may just a brief matrix. No? Uh, it's just basically, again, another map. Kung yung kanina, it's the overall map of how the courseware uh, development project will go. Ito, yung sa actual creation of the course, no? Uh, ito naman yung parang uh, a more specific, a more detailed roadmap. No? Um, I basically put it all together. No? Uh, you could imagine how it is going to be done by looking at this chart. No? So, to start the content preparation process, no? ang kailangan talaga is that you have all the materials there, no? uh, everything that you have so far. If you have the course pack, if you have the textbooks, if you have the copies of the quizzes or the exams that you've made, if it's all there, then it will be easier to begin the process no, of preparing content. So what that course development team members will do uh, along with the course developer is basically uh, to review uh, learning outcomes, to review assessments, to review even the rubrics or the grading system and then also the content. Kung may mga kulang, pag may mga gaps in terms of what is needed to really build the course, then uh, part of the role is to create that no? uh, so that it could be covered. No? So while they are doing that, the instructional designer here uh, coordinates with the course developers and the team no? and basically tries to... Uh, post them parang mga uh, process questions no halimbawa kung ito parang um, um, they, they course uh, the instructional designers will guide them in terms of suitability no halimbawa you're giving a very dense material no 
uh, and you expect students to accomplish it within this period. No? So an instructional designer takes into account principles of you know, parang how online courses could be designed no? uh, in order to reshape, halimbawa, how we would traditionally teach those subjects. No? So, yon parang the instructional designer is really the bridge between the subject matter experts, that's you, and also parang the technology that we'll be using. No? Um, so, once that is done, their work is done, no? Um, the output of this is really the course design blueprint. No? So when we're building a house, diba, we need a blueprint. But this one, for the course technician to build the course, kailangan nandoon na lahat yung ano, kumbaga, nandoon yung plano in terms of how it will be sequenced, nandoon yung content that will need to be uploaded, that will need to be encoded, so that nandoon yung materials na naka na uh, materials na naka uh, um, materials na naka digitized no uh, and, and so parang you know parang all all that the course technician will have to do is just to uh, upload all these things ah uh, sorry um uh, yung graph po is blurred um sorry i i will just i will share na lang a pdf copy of this later I, hindi ko pa alam, kasi I'm using Canva to present. It does not allow for uh, zooming in. Eh. Um, or either that or uh, mahina talaga yung internet connection. Okay. Okay. Within that courseware development workflow is really parang uh, here I just parang outlined it in even greater detail. No? Um, don't be intimidated by parang the number of steps there. Kasi these things really could be clustered into three, just three major steps. Uh, sorry, four major steps. No? The first one is the analysis. The second one is the design part. But this design part has three emphasis. First is in the objectives or the outcomes. Second emphasis is in terms of assessment. And fourth emphasis is in terms of learning activities or content. So, um, okay. this process, uh, with the content preparation step, no, which is the first step, begins with uh, yung ko kanina, basically collecting and reviewing the existing course materials that you have from the syllabus, if you have that. Or if you have the OIDP, uh, that could also be used as well. No? Um, in fact, parang may ginawa akong, if I may just share this, parang may ginawa akong workflow kasi ito yung question na tinanong nila doon sa, ano, sa SAS. No? Uh, limbawa, uh, I, I will just share this later on. No? Kung may OIDP ka, kung wala, kung meron, parang what do you do next? No? So eventually, its, its output is uh, that you have a collection already of the materials in a folder na that could be made available to the course technician later on. So, <clears throat> going back, um, I, I think maybe, maybe if it's possible, I will share with you kasi itong, uh, itong workflow po na ito, I've converted it into a spreadsheet uh, that can be used as a tool, especially um, by those overseeing the process. No, for for faculty po, parang don't worry about this, no, because it's just a guide so that parang um, the administrators will know parang what to do next, and you know parang it will just help them in organizing parang the things that they need to uh, take care of, no. But just so that you're also aware in terms of how it will proceed. No? So, yun, parang the first part is collecting, um, collecting and collating um, uh, the materials that you currently have. No? And then the second part is going through um, a needs analysis process. This is where the analysis part comes in because. Uh, based on the model that we're also adapting here, no? um, yung ADI model, no? 
which is really a process that, that is quite robust in terms of um, designing online courses. No? Um, being able to get a sense of your target audience and at the same time an analysis of your organizational context is very important in shaping the decisions that you will make in terms of how you're going to design your course. No? So in a sense, you can think of this parang in the Ignatian pedagogical paradigm as the context phase. No? So we're contextualizing the redesign of our courses by looking again at where we are and looking again at the audience that we're trying to teach it to. So after that phase, um, you have the part where you basically discuss uh, and finalize uh, the course topics and the learning outcomes. So kung meron ka nang naisulat po na learning course outcomes before, that's good. No? But now, ang, ang next phase is really looking at how you could chunk this further so that if you're going to teach it according to modules, parang each module would have its own learning outcomes. No? So yun, later part po yun. This will be part of parang the training that we will be uh, offering no? so that parang we'll become more aware no? that, so that even in our own courses, even if it's not subjected to this, no? Parang at least we get a sense of the best practices that could work for designing online courses. So this, this part of the content preparation workflow results at least in the first draft of your blueprint. So the first draft basically would give us um, siguro a branching out of the course learning outcomes into module learning outcomes. No? And at the same time, parang defining the sequencing of the topics that will be taught. No? So again, kung meron ng syllabus, parang that's already a leap ahead. All you have to do is just to review it. No? Um, kung meron ng OIDV, even better. So ibig sabihin, nakagawa na tayo ng ibang learning outcomes. It's just a matter of assessing again how we wrote it so that parang it will be um, according to standards of how course learning outcomes should be written, especially for online courses. So the next part here, once that first draft is completed, is um, yon, parang, uh, a discussion of the assessments that, ha that need to be aligned with the learning outcomes. No? So parang it's a matter of deciding, especially if we're collaborating, ano ba yung app na assessment for this particular outcome, and so on and so forth. No? And it's a matter really of aligning. This is where design is important because if it's very clear that our assessments really address the learning outcomes, then students will have a better grasp of uh, where they could locate themselves in terms of learning asynchronously. No? So ito po yung handle na gusto natin ibigay sa students. In other words, when students wonder, am I really learning something? No, all they have to do is to take a look at what they need to learn and they could assess really parang whether they're learning something or not. No? So the details of this, again, will be provided parang, uh, uh, in, in a separate uh, training course no? um, so that you know, parang alam natin how, how this is going to, 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 to run. No? And then uh, part of that is Kung wala pang assessment talaga, ha, it, this is the time to develop the assessment. It means writing out test questions. It means, uh, if not writing, at least collecting test questions, collecting the answers, no? uh, making sure that we have uh, siguro a scale no? to determine, to help students determine, kung kunyari, if they get this score, parang what does this mean? If they get that score, what does that mean? And so on and so forth. No? So, once this is done, then the first draft of your blueprint is updated with the, the, the result of this particular process. No? So now your draft, your course design blueprint, will already have assessment information aside from learning objectives and topics. No? And then the final part is, as a process, actually, uh, iba kasi ang ginagawa natin, di ba? Parang, Topic, tapos yung ano, um, content kaagad nilalagay natin. 
Pero yung, in terms of best practices, the materials and the activities are really decided after the objectives and the assessments have been aligned. So, uh, dito na natin papasok yung ano, parang the parang designing learning experiences for students. No? Uh, in other words, parang as they go through it, no? parang this will supplement how they are going to learn a particular objective. And also, the kind of activities that we design will be something that they could use in order to assess themselves no? um, in terms of whether they learn a particular content. No? So, yun po, parang it's a really... Um, parang it, it all fits together when we begin to think of it that way. Uh, topics, learning outcomes, assessments, and then uh, activities uh, and content learning materials. No? And then, once that is done, you just update the course design blueprint. And then that will really, well, the last part is to just submit the course design blueprint to the course technician. No? Or, you can have the instructional designer run through it again, check it again before uh, it's submitted to the course technician. So yun, pagtapos nito, tapos nang isipin nyo, all you have to do is just wait for the course as it is being built. And once it is built, then yung third part of the LMS training will take place. Um, so yung po yung ano, um, basically a general map of of how we will proceed in terms of developing courseware. As I mentioned, uh, it, this is just the first iteration, uh, but at least with these steps, parang it's easy to move into a second iteration and the succeeding iterations. So in other words, we're not really expecting na parang that it will be perfect the first time we do it, but at least it will contain the elements that we will expect of courseware that is developed in the Ateneo de Davao University. So yung po, all the other details in terms of how that can be done will be provided uh, uh, parang through, through other learning um, uh, seminars. No? In fact, parang ang naisip ko nga po, hindi na webinar kasi right now, if I may just share a bit, no? actually tapos na presentation. Ko. Um, I've created kanina uh, a Moodle course where uh, if you want to learn about instructional design, all you have to do is just to go through this course. So you could learn it asynchronously. No? Um, ayan, my, um, what I actually did, this is a content I produced. No? Parang what I did was gather materials and then put it all together. No? Um, and basically, parang uh, Yung iba kasi paid service, so we can't really make it available for everyone. Pero we've put it up in Moodle so that everyone can access it. Yung kwan lang po is let's not just let's not share it kasi baka ma copyright issues tayo. But we're just using it for purposes of training. No? So each of it, for example, we have Education videos. Um, it is. But it well, well, experts on instructional design will be giving us instructions of what instructional design is all about. No? So what I'll be preparing here, so I've already prepared this. No? Um, there's a section here where, um, which deals with the analysis part. No? So if you're asking, paano ba namin gawin yung analyzing our target audience doing the needs analysis? Dito po sa so module three of this courseware that I've prepared, uh, nandiyan po yung ano, uh, you go through this online course, tig ano lang naman, no? parang the entire, this entire course itself, siguro mga one, two hours. Uh, but it's all in 15 minutes, 11 minutes. The longest is about 23 minutes na modules. So that parang we could, um, uh, we, we, we could um, um, at least educate ourselves about it as well. Um, ayun po. Maybe I'll, I'll stop with that and maybe um, maybe open the floor for questions or concerns or um, issues that you 
that 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 you've thought of. No? Um, hindi ko na share po kanina. I, I've shared with some of you yung content preparation process toolkit. No? Hopefully, I can explain that in a later on a lang session. Pero ito po yung sabi kong yung online course standards na checklist. No? So as you can see here, there are areas. Tapos this, may nakalagay dito ano yung purpose ng areas na yun. And then basically a checklist of the things to look out for. And then what I did was that, limbawa, each role could evaluate themselves, no? whether you've met expectations. And then we can have other people evaluating it as well. No? So you can have the course developer, the instructional designer, uh, the project manager, the dean eventually, and eventually sa office tang ABP, uh, the office that I'm holding. Uh, we, we could subject that to parang just to vet whether it's really a, a, a quality course already that we could make available uh, online. Uh, yes, See, yeah, yes, Roy, uh, I, I, have not, I have not activated it yet, but um, I, will, I will be giving the, the uh, no, uh, I, I will just give the link to that course. Si Roy kasi asked if he can enroll in the course that was made. Oh, uh, yun po, I introduce it because from this session, um, all of you can actually enroll so that parang we could, you know, you could learn at your own pace so that hindi na rin tayo mahirapan in terms of explaining ano bang ibig sabihin itong particular part na to? Parang anong dapat natin isipin? Because yun, parang actually maganda yung, 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 yung mga videos na yun eh kasi uh, you have really expert instructional designers uh, talking about how to do it. So, yun lang po. Kinuha ko lahat yun. I compiled all of it so that we could uh, learn it ourselves. And so, kung kunyari, meron tayong sessions na ganito, yung sessions will really just to raise questions that may happen along the process. So, stop po muna ako dito and then maybe um, if if you have questions or concerns about the the roadmap that I've presented. Father, I have a question. Ah, yes, Mel Melba. I'm Melba. Hi, Melba. Um, hello, Father. This seems to me that the courseware is for a future open university that we are going to have, Nateneo, mm -hmm. right? I have two questions, by the way. So does that mean that the teacher who will do the courseware will receive royalties for this? Because this is another job. That's right. You, the, the courseware that, that the teachers will eventually author, we will be, uh, we'll be discussing you, because if it will be made available, for example, for us, as part of the university's offerings, then that's something that, ano, um, katulad yung ginagawa nila in other universities, kasi may authorship ka talaga of the courseware that you make available online. So, that's, uh, but, but that means parang that it should really be originally created content. No? Um, so, parang as we go along, along the way, no, parang the more proficient we are in, in, in terms of that, then that could really be parang a, a, a real authored courseware. No? Uh, and, and we could, we could discuss parang uh, um, concerns pertaining to royalties and uh, intellectual copyright and so on and so forth. But yes, that's a direction that, uh, yes. that we will eventually take. Because uh, if that is not going to be given royalty, this, this, then can, it can be sold to other schools and other programs mm -hmm. in that case. Number two, Father, I have been waiting for the training on instructional design mm -hmm. from the very beginning because we're doing classes. And right now you, are, uh, you have mentioned that we will be having instructional designers, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. I do not understand that because basically when we do our lessons, we should be trained how to do instructional designs precisely because we know our content better and we understand the students better. We understand the need. And I don't understand why not all of us are going to be trained because we are both the instructional designer. Before we shall deliver, we should also know how to do the online strategies, teaching strategies. And at the same time, uh, I guess uh, 
the technicalities will be embedded in the course mm -hmm. because precisely that's that's the main difficulty that teachers are having at the moment so i we are now embarking on courseware without us having been taught of instruction the basics of instructional design and learning strategies for online platforms we were taught platforms but you know very well that platforms are just platforms uh the way we try to to deliver teaching will also matter a lot on the effects of these to our students mm -hmm. that's besides uh, that's precisely why a lot of students would complain because a lot of teachers do not know what are the different and the varied mm -hmm. strategies to, to do and to use mm -hmm. so nasasanay na mag lecture mag video mag lecture mag video mag lecture kaya parang hindi rin kasi alam ng teacher kung paano niya i-deliver kasi hindi po kami nabigyan ng training. So ngayon, nagre-reklamo ang estudyante iba dahil na, na syempre, it's going to be very heavy if you're going to use the computer. So now we are going to embark on courseware without us having to go through the basics and the rudiments of online learning strategies. So yun lang po yung concern ko. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Melba, for expressing that. That's why po uh, ginawa ko yung course ng ano, Nitong for instructional design, uh, and it's going to be made available through Moodle so that everyone could take it so that uh, um, we'd all be on the same page in terms of parang what, what we are talking about when we're talking about instructional design. The difficulty kasi sa ibang schools, uh, where, why we did not uh, proceed with it yet, was una, um, parang there's a lot of talking muna with people, no? Uh, and also, parang some faculty have been resistant in terms of, parang not, parang <laughs> don't touch us first, though, parang in terms of ano. Uh, but but now it's here. It's uh, it's going to be made available for everyone, and hopefully it will help both administrators and faculty understand, uh, parang uh, some of the best practices that we could use in terms of this uh, of of teaching online. So it has a tesser lemin, parang yung courseware will be subjected to a more formal process of development. Pero yung nga, parang nga, we're just prioritizing certain courses first. But for the rest, everyone could benefit from all just taking up this um, um, online online uh, modules that we prepared uh, sa ating LMS. So you, you, could, you could enroll in it. I, I just okay, haven't Father. activated it yet. Father? But, yeah. uh, I have a concern kasi simula nung summer, basa na ako ng basa ng instructional design. Uh, naturuan din po ako ni Dr. Lupiteo. Alam niyo, Father, konti lang kasi may turo because of hindi naman yun formalized. May natutunan ako doon. Kung hindi, kung nagbasa lang po ako, mahirap po talaga. Kasi marami pong methodology, maraming designs po ba. E common naman yung ADI. Pero ADI may not be very good in nursing. There are other things that I used another one. Ah, uh, Siguro sana, Father, apart from this, which is also helpful, uh, I still would like to rally behind the idea of us being, you know, learning by doing. We have to do that because I've tried reading. A lot of us have read. And it's not so easy to articulate that in the classroom by way of designing lessons, especially our case, which is mostly skills. It's different when you do that in lecture because lecture, yeah, you can be very creative with that. Uh, still, the creativity of a teacher is somewhat limited. A lot of us, especially in my colleagues, they did not have basic education mm -hmm. formation program. Mm -hmm. I had with a grade school. That's why I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. But then again, even me, who understood lesson planning, who understood creativity, mm -hmm. would really have difficulty in understanding the, 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 the idea, the, of course, the pedagogy mm -hmm. of instructional design. Mm -hmm. So... Well, thank you for the for the additional learning, but I still would hope that it will be given because we can only learn by doing. Sige. Exactly, um, Father. Yeah. Thank you. Th thank you, Melba, for that uh, suggestion. Um, yeah, we, we, it, that's why parang we're, we're doing this conversation with the schools because each school uh, would have different needs. No? Uh, and I'm say, certainly hearing you out parang in terms of what's needed. So we have here parang something which could help us give the basic principles. But there are still some things talaga which are quite specific in terms of how we could develop our courseware, no? which uh, hopefully will be uh, yung, the theme basically of, of the kind of courseware that we'll be, we will develop parang is something that needs to be uh, discussed and explained further. No? But in terms of yung mga, the general 
understanding of best practices ganyan uh, and, and nandito sila sa mga itong sa mga the courses that will make available through Moodle no so yon uh, maybe we could ano um set schedule siguro for it no uh, in terms of how we could work on that no? parang step by step similar to what we're doing sa SAS no uh, so this is just a preliminary um, exposition in terms of um, how we're going to proceed no? um, and depending on the needs of the units no uh, then we will respond accordingly um, to those needs but certainly parang we're here to support uh, and 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 learn also and you know parang we, we learn from each other in the process of crafting it <coughs> thank you thank you for uh, thank you for your comments and suggestions <coughs> thank you that father you're welcome thank you so much anyone else who wants to um uh, voice out or raise a question or concern. Go ahead, please, please. Um, kailan po mag kailangan i-materialize father itong courseware natin? Kailan talaga po yung target date mag-start and uh, ang target date po father para matapos po yung lahat? Yung uh, what what we prioritizing right now po is the um is the are the GE courses the core courses okay oh, father okay so um for example for certain schools that don't have uh, GE courses um halimbawa ang SBG is thinking na uh, well, well galing na ako sa SBG kasi kanina they're thinking of starting with some courses that are catering to a like, huge number of their students no so mm -hmm. they they'd want to start it no Pero at least for the second semester, ang gusto lang na is yung version 1.0 of uh, the GE courses. Uh, at least meron tayong pandon. No? Uh, and then we go down the line in terms of the other courses that will be subjected to the process. But that doesn't mean that you cannot proceed. You can start if you decide to. No? Um, yung timeline halimbawa ng SBG kanina, they said na parang during the second semester, they will they will use that semester to start mm. developing uh, their courses. Pero yung mm. po, priority mo na ngayon is GE and core courses. Oh, okay. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you. Uh, any any questions po or concerns uh, from from the you know, um, basically the overview um I, I, I just want to say na no, na yon parang what i've presented parang it as much as it is a general template of how we could proceed um, the fact that we are discussing it parang at this level means that uh, I'm also open in terms of how this could really be appropriated uh, for the School of Nursing. No? So parang it, it's also a learning process for me in terms of how uh, you know, parang this could be developed further parang, um, in terms of actual process. So you know, parang, um, we, we, we could always talk and discuss it. No? Uh, so that you know, parang the course development 
process will really be something that's quite unique also for the School of Nursing kasi nga, recognizing um, its, its, its uniqueness also as a school. <coughs> So, um, Father OG. Uh, yes, Lin Pat. In other words, um, the faculty as well as administration, like uh, the school of the school of nursing management council, can uh, decide whether we take into consideration a specific um, time frame for us to finish no, the professional courses. Because initially, as what was mentioned by Father Oji, we should be starting with the general education courses first and then move on to the professional courses. But then um, the different schools also have um, suggested that uh, there are, since there are uh, schools who do not teach general education subjects, so we better start with the professional courses because uh, that's the only concern we have, especially the second semester. We have a, a couple of professional courses be, to be offered for second sem. So uh, this early, we can already start so that uh, by end of the semester, second semester, we'll be able to finish uh, at least a couple of professional courses. So it's up to us, Father, to calendar? Yes, po. Yes, po. Um, kasi in the other schools, parang they said parang, uh, they can start with three or four na parang experimental courseware nila talaga. Um, so since, and, and, and that's, that's fine with me. Parang, um, you know, parang since we're all, parang we, 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 at least we, we would want to, to test parang how, how this is going to proceed. And once we become familiar with it, siguro the process will be much easier down the line. Okay. Um, but, you know, parang yun din eh, uh, as I mentioned, um, in as much as we're trying to consider and, you know, parang um, pacing ourselves, no? there's also the reality na parang our students are really clamoring for some kind of consistency or standard in terms of our courses no so parang that also needs to be taken into consideration no in as much as we're also considering uh, parang uh, where we are parang our own status as faculty teaching and still grappling siguro with whatever is happening at this point so siguro i'm sure we could find a good balance in terms of you know meeting both parang where we are and at the same time parang what we could do to avert, for example, yung what has been parang a rather difficult uh, semester, no? uh, both from students and also for faculty. I would like to add something because I, I listened to Mampat. Wouldn't it be difficult for teachers to do it right now, given that we are adjusting to a lot of things and we will be making our exams in the coming days. At the same time, we are still doing something for the lectures that we are giving and the, and the things that we are doing at this time. Number two, have we already have, do we have already an instructional designer to understand the work that we do? Because that is very difficult if we're going to do that and then we don't have an instructional designer or we are not trained to be instructional designers of our work then what is the direction that we're taking? I don't think we should hurry up. I, I think we have to understand where we are now at this time, uh, Father, because uh, as I mentioned to you, online learning is different. If we will put TDL there, that is very good. If we will put, uh, you know, scavenger hunt, that's very good. But only a few of us know that. Because that is necessary. When we are going to do the coursework, I think we, may, we, we have to make sure that the online learning strategies are also being used. We cannot go back to the traditional strategies that we have in face-to-face -face teaching, is it not? Therefore, if you're going to make that coursework, the strategies that should be applied will also be online learning strategies. PBL, uh, the, the, the scavenger hunt, the treasure hunt, or whatever. These are just few examples. So I would like to ask, do we have an instructional designer who will teach us? Because if we are going to make our coursework, 
for, for this course where father while the source is the content is from us we should also understand how we're going to deliver this yeah uh, we, we have we have an instructional design that's why there's a template that we're proposing you know, um, that would contain and shape parang how courses should be developed so we we, we have that instructional design you know? um, so ang, ang what we're considering now is really parang uh, the, the preparedness of Limbawa, certain faculty or certain subjects for it um, Surely there are some na who feel na sige, parang we're willing to undertake this. Uh, some might feel that parang we're not ready yet. No? Uh, but it's a matter of identifying kasi nga parang in the context that we are in right now, there's also that consideration of, you know, parang our students feel that we're not really delivering what we had promised. No? Uh, so we're trying to do what we can in order to, you know, uh, as I said, parang perfection really is the enemy of the good. Why not be perfect, but there's the assurance that we're doing something about it. And we are doing something about it. That's why, um, yun nga, parang along the line, uh, this is, as I said, my initial presentation. No? Um, but the steps in terms of how it could be done, parang it's all, um, parang uh, we, we, we planned it, in other words, parang uh, we know what to do. Uh, to be able to move us from this point to that point. So yon parang but but once again parang yon we're we're listening and we're hearing out parang where people are at this point. Pero at the same time yon parang uh, siguro and, and encouraging others also to think of parang we place it in the, in the bigger context no. So that's why it's really a matter of finding parang what would be the right balance between you know parang uh, what we need to do where we are at the moment, no? Surely we cannot, you know, parang be paralyzed, no? Surely we cannot just go ahead and not think and just go and do it without really knowing what to do. But uh, as I mentioned, parang, there's a plan in terms of what we can do uh, and we'd like to find ways to be able to just accompany people to move towards that direction. So, yun, parang, and, and I think, parang, Within the schools, parang I think you're better place to be able to uh, discern parang which which seems to be the right balance for it. So yun parang a, a, a balance siguro parang in terms of parang where we are all coming from, what situation we find ourselves in, uh, where we're heading. Father, if the students felt that, you mm -hmm. must know that the teachers felt deprived as well. Mm. I've been hearing a lot that for students do like this, like that, mm. but not so much from from the real expectation of teachers that we will be taught mm. the proper way to teach. Mm. So in the at, at the end, kasi parang kami ang nabi blame, mm. dahil hindi naman kami tinuro ang paano magturo eh. Yeah, that's why. Parang, I hope you understand. I hope you understand that that is where we are right now. Yeah, we we in in a sense, parang that's true. Parang we all jumped into this, di ba? Um, kaya nga ngayon parang we we want to support everyone parang in terms of of that kasi you know, parang when we shifted parang we really jumped head on into this no um, and unlike others na parang who had time to sort of prepare for it although hindi pa nga sila talaga din at prepared uh, this time parang we have we have something to to be able to Parang help teachers with 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 the courseware that they have. So yeah, uh, that that's that's the only thing, siguro, that that I could say. Parang I understand where where we're all coming from. I'm teaching six classes, and it's difficult to be teaching six classes. Um, you know, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> and, I think magaling ka na father, nagnahihirapan ka. Paano na lang kami? <laughs> kaya, kaya nga, kaya nga. Parang di ba we're parang we 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 just want to help everyone parang how to do it to parang and, and i'm sure parang it's this is not the only parang solution to it diba marami pa namang pwedeng marami pa namang pwedeng ways eh no but uh, given what we have uh, and what we can do siguro parang to just slowly move towards it no? um yeah si uh, si Lyra mentioned father internet allowance nga wala pa kami well, yeah, I don't know. Di pa kalakupo meron. 
binigay na internet allowance but uh, you know, I, I don't know parang how part -time to Part-time po it. siya, Father. Part-time. Part-time po ah, part -time. Na kaso. Opo. Ah, okay. Sorry po, I, I cannot answer some of the questions because uh, I, I wouldn't know yung setup. Parang what, what I have been mandated to work on is really you know, helping out parang yung how we could um, redesign our courseware. Um, any any other thoughts? Po? Um, it's it's good that we're having this uh, conversation so that we could you know talk about things. No. Um, Are there other questions? So, Father, um, does that mean that uh, next week we will still be meeting for the the other webinars? Well, well if, if if you would like to parang con continue with it, I will be sending po yung the um, yung mga the links to the courses that that people could already start enrolling yes. in. Uh, so the first one is really instructional design so that uh, those who parang still find this concept parang a bit foreign parang could start learning about it. But what we will do siguro in terms of um, yung working really with it uh, sa, sa school is applying th these concepts in terms of parang the design of the courses that we're making. So, I, yun, parang yung the, the specific things in terms of this instructional design that we'll be using uh, so that parang the elements that we want to expect of how our online courses are designed could be implemented in terms of uh, siguro the training sessions that we will have. Yes, thank you, Father. So mag-set na lang po tayo din pat ng date uh, if if everyone's amenable to it no um you know um so I, I don't know parang um how how you will decide on your own timelines no um but it would be good to know siguro parang what what you intend to do so that we'll know parang we could pace ourselves accordingly depending on um um what you feel would be most up given your situation as a school of nursing. Yes, Father. We will do that and we will involve uh, some of the, the faculty members who will be part of the team also so that uh, we will all agree with the timeline that we will present to you and uh, we'll make sure that uh, it will be out as soon as possible. Sige po, sige po. You, so wh whatever you come up with, po, uh, we, we will accompany you along the way. So, and then yon parang as we go through the process, parang let's let's make it a learning process so that we could refine further uh, what we're doing. Uh, yes, I, I I often din patal said we say this many times. Pero yung image po natin talaga ngayon is we're building the bridge as we're crossing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess for most most universities, you know, uh, just a side note now. Yung Xavier University, actually, si Father Mars, their president, has uh, reached out to us, no? parang asking kung what we're doing in terms of ano. Um, so they're actually asking if we they could uh, if we could present yung the template that we're using. Um, so we might be helping them out as well. So yun parang nangangapa lahat, no? Uh, mm -hmm. And and what we have at this point is a plan. Uh, in terms of how to do it, um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll let's let's see, parang how 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 this goes. So, uh, they have a new dean for the school of nursing, father. Sino sino na po dean nila? Uh, I, 
I think uh, one of the faculty na, kasi si Dean Heidi already retired. And she is now one of our nominees for the Board of Nursing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Malas lang talaga to be at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, sige po, um, and unless there are other questions, parang, um, uh, I'll just leave you to, to, to decide siguro kung ano, um, how you're going to go about it. And then if you've made a decision in terms of how you want to proceed, then we could come in and then just go through the process that the other schools are going through. Yes, Father. We will, of course, uh, consider the um, the faculty in terms of uh, preparing the calendar for the School of Nursing. But it will certainly make us all busy <laughs> up to summer, I guess, because we will, of course, prepare for the first semester's courses, professional courses also. But uh, the professional courses for this first semester already has all these materials, so we can just uh, align it and then add some more to the LMS that we would like to develop for the School of Nursing. Madugo po talaga yung uh, in the literature, parang a typical nine-week course would mm -hmm. take 80, 80 plus hours to develop. <laughs> Pero may team na yun. <laughs> <laughs> for mga professionals din gumagawa na. Uh, pero pero ang, ang strength po kasi natin is because we have the subject matter experts here. Yeah. And at the same time, Father, that will also in a way give us the confidence also that uh, what we are teaching can already be um, uniform. Uh, we will all be consistent in terms of delivering quality nursing education because it it's going to be a contribution of all the experts in the professional ah, course. Ah, I mean, you have such a roster here. No? Parang, um, yes, Father. I mean, you know, the possibilities of it is really uh, quite uh, no, encouraging parang kung, kung if we're able to hack it. Diba? Ah. I think it's only Ateneo is doing this because the rest of the universities or even the colleges of nursing are not uh, into this yet. Maybe I don't know if the, that has been considered in terms of uh, preparing for quality nursing education in different colleges of nursing. But I guess this is again pioneering on the part of Ateneo because most of the, the LMS that we use are already prepared. And so if we would like to consider using this, we have to pay. But this time it's uh, originally from the Ateneo faculty. And that is something yeah. Yeah. very unique. Yeah. Na train lang sila. Yun lang difference. Na train sila ng, ng ID father. Kasi they, the CHED kasi nag sponsor ng mga seminars coming from different schools. When they presented it, we knew that they were really trained with the basics and the rudiments and the learning strategies. Kaya, in terms of the, the they call it course pack kasi sa, doon sa, ano yung inintroduce ng CHED, um, we also were able to um, make use of the different uh, guidelines that they are now using in terms of producing this course packs. Now, in fact, uh, it was Yusef who shared its own uh, no, guidelines in the preparation. But uh, there was no training at all. The decision was just to partner with the different schools or the different uh, graduate schools so that those who are teaching the same subjects or courses will have to be handled by uh, faculty from the different schools and they, they will come up with one course pack for that particular professional course. Uh, I am also informed that uh, these are what the, we do for the graduate programs. Pero yun lang, wala naman masyadong training sa totoo lang. Binigyan lang kami ng... Hey, 
yung sa mga uh, sa St. Luke sa Santo Tomas kasi nagbigay sila eh nagpresent sila kung paano nila ginagawa. It was really different. Kaya medyo yun yung hindi namin na experience. To be very honest about it. Kaya no napanood namin bakit masyadong organized, bakit alam na alam nila kung paano i-present ito. Yun yung hinahanap din namin kasi yeah, we are good in our topics. We are experts in our in our subject matter. But this is a new platform. This is a new thinking tool that we have to deliver properly. Because otherwise, um, we'll always be blamed. Na we are not doing it right. That's that's why that is going to change now, Melba. <laughs> if we uh, if we will undertake it. Yeah, we have to begin with ID Father. Because yeah. if we will just talk about courseware, and then we are the ones going to deliver it. No, no, no. Because ID is the heart of courseware. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why. Because, uh, because, kung titingnan mo father, magiging magaling ang courseware pero yung turo ng teacher hindi pareho, di ba? Iba, parang iba paren. Unahin natin don sa root para yung expert magiging expert teacher hindi lang expert sa subject matter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Parang that's that's really. Parang if if you look at what we are planning to do, um, that that's that's what we will do. So, parang we're we're really trying to pick up from, you know, parang being basically surprised by the shift that had happened, to you know picking it picking up the pieces now and trying to really work towards something more viable. So hopefully, you know, parang hopefully we could all work work it out, no, uh, with with everyone. So far, Father, to to also to be to have the positive effect. Ah, uh, sa mga students naman namin, nakakakop naman sila, based on the changes that we have seen in them. So mas maganda siguro kung mas marami pa tayong methodology para mas mas maganda naman yung effect afterwards. Pero salamat, salamat sa lahat. Yeah, I mean, you, your experiences ah, uh, parang uh, count very much in terms of parang helping others as well, parang um, think through other strategies, no. But uh, you know, we, we we will we will show parang how yung, yung the heart of it, no? uh, and and the nitty gritty parang uh, is really you, I mean all the other details parang are are tangential pero yung nga, parang we do recognize that uh, without good instructional design parang our own online education will crumble. So um, we we'll, we will provide that kind of scaffolding uh, to help our teachers as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you for. Okay, um, if if there are no more um, comments and suggestions, no, um, I, I will just you know, uh, uh, wait for Dean Pat signal, parang as to how we could proceed next, no. Um, and then maybe we we can Dean Pat and I will talk siguro then about um, parang uh, Steps uh, steps forward. We will update so, you. Skipo, but thank you again for uh, um, for your time. Thank you for listening, and um, thank you also, despite the circumstances that we are in. Parang uh, you you trying your best to be able to carry out this you know, um, this educational enterprise. Um, so yun, parang I'm quite very thankful because. Kahit papaano, parang we're trying to support this university parang in its mission of continuing to provide education despite the pandemic that we are in. So salamat po for all your efforts and uh, you know for being patient as well uh, despite the fact that uh, we might not have been able to really address some of the things when we started. But we'll certainly um, attend to that and uh, you know parang, uh, recover. Um, with, with, with your uh, with God's help and with your uh, cooperation and your convo support. Maraming salamat sa inyo, Father OG. Thank you po. Salamat din po to everyone. Thank you po, Father. Salamat, Father. Thank you po. Thank you, Father. God bless. God bless. Thank you po. Thank you, Father. Thank you po lahat. Salamat sa tanan. Have a good day. Bye -bye. Have a good day, friends. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye, everyone.
Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye, Apple. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Father. Bye-bye. Thank you. Father, gimingaw na ko sa imo si Apple ni. <laughs> Oo, ganito. Doon ganito kita wala na kita, Apple. Lagi, uy. Isa naman ni Father, uy. <laughs> Ikaw, kumusta naman ka? Uh, Maugya po na ni Father. Naglisod o lakaw o baktas. <laughs> Kaya kung tiil, di ba sa una, Father, because Ay, of oh. my diabetes. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. uh, karon medyo maglisod na yung gugakaw, Father, uy. Pero siguro pag wala na yung COVID, kay na dungagan ni, kay wala na kay ko exercise Di man ko kagawa. So, diri po sa balay, murag nalahi ragid oy eh. aso kani tapit sa inyo ha apol matina pangi father pangi dito sa taas mm -hmm. uh, ay but... ikaw father pero maminti lang gyapon ka sa school o gagawas-gawas pud ka father well, karon baya nag quarantine mi kay si father tony nag positive baya aw oh, lagi pero kumusta naman siya father okay na okay man siya dito man siya na quarantine sa mamay in nakadumdum ko katong recollection dito ba sa kain ay, oh. Tama day, Father, no? <laughs> Lagi, no? Ay, tama day, no? Kain ng dampod ko. Sige, Father, or take care always. Yes, Hope to see you uh, soon. Bye-bye. Salamat, you. Father. Bye-bye. Ipabalhin, ipabalhin, ipabalhin kita namang si Father Tony kay supposedly nasa ikaw ibang sa room. So, ni, ni, oh, oh, ano oh. na kuwa si Sir Bong. Ay, salamat, oh. Pedroy, ha? Kay, Sige, balhin na. Birjud ka ayaw itong nga nung paris-paris sa kwarto. Kung saan man itong... Actually, Kwan, sinwerte, sin, sinwerte na gidaw yan, Father, kasi ang ubang gidaw ang nakupat pa sa isa kakwarto. Ha? Mau ba? Uh, Napunipindot sa kuwa. Yeah, ang napindot sa kuwa, magkawang po ginta ito kung di siya gidala sa mental. Saan? Yun daw ang pinakamagandang ano. Facility. O, oh, na asa, accommodation. A, asa dito? Sa mga, dito ano, asa dito sa mental ang facility? Katong katong sa UP ata, banda. Katong sa UP. Hindi hmm. yeah, ko sure basta <laughs> wala yung sa mental ata. No, di mo rutong gwapo dito ang accommodation. Tagan daw magilugay dito kung nay magtakuan. Si Father Bo, uh, si Father, si Sir Bong actually na shave ano ata, pariente pud nga na COVID. Mm. So dito pud maganda ra nga dito, sabi ni Sir Bong. Fortunately, ah, okay. dahil magud na una na, na dala si Father ano, Father Tony. Unya wala man goy hold kay ang SPMC, dili mo guna under SPMC, that's under City Health Office. I see. Ang mga ano, ang mga oh. So, one. At least na na na, na Napabalhin si Father Tony nga sa isa ka room. Yan. Salamat. Kaya lang, wala palang aircon oh, doon. Kaya ito nagkwan. Kamuda ay nangitag pa agyan. Murang nag... Oh, kaya nag... Uh, Kapala kami ba kay Naunsa naman ito pag hawid. Uy, kay... <laughs> Ikat, katong pag, pagkagabi pa lang daan, katong naabta nag uh, kaadlawan si Father Tony, nag, nag PM sa kuha si, ano, si Haji kay Murugwa pa ata na balikin si Father Tony so nakita ko pa agi po niya makontak ang uban may na lang na atiman na siya niya na, na balikin na lagi sa mamay in kaya lang yun alam sama siyang isa o, pero at least okay na, na naayos na, na nalipat na okay si Father thank you Roy, Roy oh, mag magtawag lang yes, yes. ang meeting natin ng mga ID Roy okay lang sa'yo naman okay sige sige Father sige sige Father okay sige po sige po Father salamat thank you okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, thank you very much.